this place tonight is full of servant and servant leaders, uh, that there are people in this place that are influential and that we all have some kind of influence wherever we go. Did you guys know that? Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you think you're a nobody, whether you think you're a everybody, whether you think you're a somebody, um, whether you know it or not, you do carry an influence. And I want to talk about the influence that Jesus had and just kind of what that looked like. Um, I think a lot of times as we're servants, as we are ministers in the house of God, and as we minister here on the stage and as we do worship and as we live our lives, oftentimes we hear this uh, phrase, be like Jesus, right? We want to be like Jesus. We want to bless somebody like Jesus blessed, right? All right, well, I was looking at that the other day. Me and the guys were doing a Bible study, and this really st stuck out to me. And it says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying the following. So the first thing that we see with Jesus, the first thing that we see with Jesus is that when Jesus saw the crowds, Right? When you and I see the multitudes, when we are at college, when we are at school, when we are at work, we see the multitudes, right? Right? What do we do? Do we simply blend in or do we set ourselves apart? Jesus did this amazing thing. So Jesus, he, he, he's our example and he's my example. And what he does is that he does the hard work. He climbs the side of a hill. He climbs a mountain and gives this Sermon on the Mount, as we've dubbed it, right? So he climbs this mountain. What does he do? First and foremost, he separates himself. I think oftentimes, many times, we want to do something for God. We want to be influential, but we, we refuse to be different. We want to do something great, but we don't want to be looked at as different. Jesus Christ, not only was he different, not only did he separate himself, he also did some hard work. It's not easy, it's not easy to do something uh, influential in the good way. So Jesus Christ, he does this first thing. He climbs the mount and he separates himself. And he separates himself to such a, to such a degree that there's nobody with him to where he needs to call somebody to him. He had to call the disciples to him while the crowds remained. I, I want to be practical, and um, I don't know, as, as, as you're all in this place, I don't know where you are in your life, uh, the things that you do in your life, or um, the things that we might have to cut off or cast out in order to be different. You know, the Bible says, we had a, we had a sermon this morning that spoke about this, and the Bible says that... Um, the, 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 the gate into heaven is narrow and few find it. The path into salvation and the path into, the path into heaven is narrow and few find it. And so Jesus Christ, he separates himself and, and there's nobody with him. In our lives, my question is, is, are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to do the hard work? Are we willing to be the odd man out in order to make a difference? I, and, 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 and I don't think that uh, when we look at it that way, that many of us want to do it. It sounds good. It's like, yeah, I want to be like Jesus. It's like Jesus was killed for what he did. Jesus was killed because he went against the grain. Like everybody's paddling down creek. They're like, Woo, this, is, this is just great. We're going to make it to heaven. And he's like going the other way. And he's like, you guys are all going the wrong way. You guys ain't going to heaven. Heaven is up. You guys are heading down. You know, you guys are flowing with the tide, and we got to go the opposite direction. Are you guys catching that? How about a little bit more practical? You know, there are things that are okay for those who are in the world. You see, if you're perishing, what difference does it make? But, who, but for us who are in Christ... There is a big difference in what we allow to come into our life. There's a scripture that says that 
There was a tree planted by living water, and it was green. And this is in Jeremiah 17, and it says that it was green all season. It was green in all seasons because its, its roots went all the way down to the living water. Its roots, and, and our living water is Jesus, right, if, if we take that meta- metaphor. And so if our roots go down to Jesus, then we would be full of Jesus. But if our roots go down to the things of this world, it says that a good tree produces good fruit, uh, from, uh, from the good it has in it, and a bad tree produces bad fruit from the bad it has in it. If we, if we accept the things of this world, the culture of this world, then we will not be separated from this world, but we will be just like this world, and we will blend right in, right? The kind of, can I do this? The kind of music that we listen to. What, what kind of influences what kind of an influence does it have in our life? Well, you say, well, it's not a sin. I'm not saying it's a sin because that'd be foolish. But Jesus said it like this. It's not what, what comes in you that is sin. It's what comes out of you that is sin, right? But if you fill yourself up with filth, if that, is, if that is the rain that is coming down on your life, if that's the atmosphere that you're in, what kind of a fruit are you going to produce? Good trees produce good fruit, and we know that who is only good? Oh, there's only one who's good. Only God is good. So the only kind of trees that produce good fruit are the trees that are full of God, whose, uh, uh, whose roots go down to Jesus Christ, who is the living water. That are the, those are the only good trees. Those are the only ones who bear good fruit. If we want to be like Jesus, we must be different. We must be odd. Do you like being odd? Come on, we live in an age where it's all about how cool am I and how many likes do I got and how many this and did you comment my status and you must not be my friend because you didn't comment my status and you didn't like my status so man, I'm mad at you and now I'm not gonna like your status. It's all about cool. It's all about social media. It's all about who is the greatest. What are we really about? What are we really doing? Jesus says that there's no greater love than this, than one who would lay down his life for his friend. And that's what Jesus did. He separated himself to such a point. He loved us so much more than he loved himself to such a point that they killed him for it. He, you know, let, me, let me keep reading here. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11, it says, blessed are you when people insult you, they persecute you falsely, and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I want to look at that again. It says, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you falsely, saying all kinds of of evil against you and now people might be saying a lot of evil against you right Uh, like maybe maybe people just don't like you and you know what that's not the same kind of persecution that's gonna uh, bring you bring you a reward in heaven right If, if you're just an annoying person or if people don't like you because you steal or if people don't like you because you're constantly cursing at them or or if people don't like you because you're loud and obnoxious and you're just rude well let me tell you something that won't get you a reward. So don't, don't, don't look at yourself like, oh, I'm so persecuted. Nobody likes me. They might not like you for a very good reason. It's true. It's only when people persecute you because of me, because of Jesus. And that's much different. Because Jesus did everything out of love. So when Jesus was persecuted, it's because he did things out of love. And he said, bless those who curse you. And instead of cursing the people who curse us and saying, you didn't show up to my thing, so I won't show up to your thing. Come on. I'm preaching. Right? Come on. Uh, Jesus says, curse those. I mean, bless those. (laughs) Sorry. He says, bless those who curse you. Come on. I'm sorry, Lord. You know what I'm saying. Um, So he says, bless those who curse you. And and so are you willing 
to, to separate yourself in such a way that when you love on people and you're like, man, I love you and I'm going to buy you lunch and I'm going to take you out. And at the end of it all, man, they say, you're God, you and you're God and you're, you're foolish and you're dumb. And you're like, okay, you want to hang out again tomorrow? Right? Doesn't that sound weird? Doesn't that sound crazy? That's how Jesus got killed. They were like, we hate you. And he's like, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. That's who Jesus has called us to be. I believe that God wants to raise up a generation of truth. I believe that God doesn't just want to raise up a generation of feel-good Christianity. Did you know it's really easy to do feel-good Christianity? Victor and I were talking about this the other day. I, I love Victor. He's a, he's a man of God. He's a, you guys are blessed to have a youth pastor like that. Come on. And Victor and I agreed on this one thing, is that it's easy to feel if you, if you go by the way of the world. You can bring in tons of people for all kinds of random reason. It's actually really easy. But if you want to go the way of truth, lots of people won't like it. But those that do, they'll be on fire like the disciples. Jesus says this thing, right? He says, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Right? You guys remember that? And everybody is like, I'm out of here. All the people disperse. And he looks at his disciples like, are you going to go too? And they're like, man, we, we don't have anywhere to go. God, all that we have is in you. That's what I want. That's what we need. I don't need a bunch of people that can do, just do random things in order to bring people to church. I want people that are so on fire for Jesus Christ that they're preaching the gospel, that they're ministering to everybody they come in contact with. But how does it happen? You see, the crowds came to Jesus. Jesus didn't go to get the crowds. Did you guys notice that? It says Jesus came into the place when they... When, now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. There were so many people, he had to separate himself, right? He separates himself because the crowds came to him. What was it? The question comes, if, if, if God gives you influence over anybody's life, anybody, do you have something to give them? The crowds came to Jesus because he had something to give. People will not come to you. People will not come to me unless you have something to give. If somebody's hungry, if a beggar's hungry, man, I always get hit up. And it's cool. I say, let me buy you a sandwich. They say, no, I just want your money. So I know they're really hungry. But... Um, if, if a beggar's hungry, they don't go to another beggar and say, give me some food. Because they both got nothing. They always find somebody who's dressed better than them or that looks like they're doing better than them. And they say, hey, give me some money for food. People that are hungry are coming to eat. If you don't have anything to give, why would people come? So I want to make this easier because that can be a very daunting task. If you try to provide food on your own, I'm telling you, you've already lost. Go see Victor or come see Vasily or myself. We're going to pray for you. If you're going to try to produce food on your own, if you want to be your own self-proclaimed minister, if you want to be your own self-proclaimed worship leader, if you want to be your own self-proclaimed leader of anything, you've already lost. There's only one way. Here's what it says. Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. It's that he came to be a light in the darkness. And then he, he goes on and he professes this about us. Verse 14 of chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount. He says the following, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light, say your light, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We reflect Jesus Christ. There is only one thing we can give that's valuable. 
you guys know that? There is nothing I can give that any of you could want except for my love for Jesus. It's when the light of Jesus Christ shines off of us. Jesus says it like this. He said, when I am lifted up, all men will be drawn unto me. When we lift Jesus Christ up in our lives, when we have the light of Jesus Christ inside of us, right, because we are the temple of God, when Jesus Christ shines through us, that's when people receive something that they need. I believe that as his church, as his youth, as his generation, and the other youth, I believe that God has a great calling on our life. It's not something that we can give on our own, but it's only something that we'll be able to give once we have Jesus Christ living down inside of us. To do that, it'll take separation. First, so, okay, so first and foremost, we need to have Jesus inside of us. Second of all, we ought to be able to separate ourselves from the things of this world. All of these come with a price. Few people want to pay, pay the price. A lot of people want to talk about it. Few people want to pay the price. Then we separate ourselves from the things of this world. And as we are persecuted, we continue to love. And then it says that for great is your reward in heaven. He says, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this life. Great is your reward in heaven. You may not be surrounded by a lot of close friends, but don't worry about that. The people that claim to have a lot of close friends, it's, it's not true. The, uh, uh, in Proverbs it says, a man of many companions comes to ruin. You may just have few people that are faithful next to you, that are willing to listen to what you have to say. But God will light those people on fire and they'll be able to carry the word of truth. That's what we want. We want a real generation, a people that are really saved, that are really pursuing Christ, that aren't just here to get something from God, but are here because they want to give, because they want to worship, because they love. 